Hey everyone, welcome to the Bible Faith family. I'm Aisha Foster, thank you so much for joining us. We'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome our online family as well. I'm so glad that you guys are joining us today. I really hope that this will be an uplifting word that you can take with you throughout your week and apply it to your daily lives. So, we encourage you to remain focused, Make sure that you're paying attention to what it is that God has for you. I'm sure that there's something that we can all take with us. And also remember to share this link with a friend. I'm sure we all have someone that we can share this message with. We want to spread the good news, the gospel. And uh, I want to just go in here and just briefly uh, go over some things I talked about. Now, I talked about recently, amen, the covenant connection. Somebody said covenant, covenant. connection. Now, that's very important. Now, remember again, amen, uh, when we talk about covenant, and today I'm going to talk about the faith covenant. The, someone say the faith covenant. Now, the covenant connection from the beginning of time talked about when the Lord made a agreement with Abram and said, uh, walk before me perfectly, and thou shalt also circumcise the foreskin of the firstborn child or whatever, you know, every male child should say. And so now, as that was done, amen, the Lord said here in the New Testament, he was teaching on circumcision. And that was in Jeremiah 4 and 4. He said, circumcise yourselves and take away the foreskins of your heart. So now it's no longer the flesh thing. It's really the spiritual thing. So when you look at your heart, amen, God said, take away, amen, the foreskins of our heart. That means anything covering your heart that's wrong, anything that's not right in your heart. That's why David said these words, creating me a clean heart amen renew with me a right spirit so when we clean our heart that's taking away the old skins of the old nature of the old man and we're now we representing christ in our new nature so again uh another scripture to talk about in Jer uh, joshua chapter 5 verse 8 it says it came to pass that they they were had done circumcising all the people abode in their camp, in their places, so they all were made whole. So now again, when we circumcise our heart, cleanse our heart, the truth is you're walking in wholeness. And we must understand that in order to fulfill God's purpose, now we'll find God's purpose here and there, but there got to be a wholeness. Amen. Let me number four, please. All right. Now today. We're talking about, amen, the covenant of faith. Somebody said the covenant of faith. Covenant of faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. And I don't want to talk about this here today, amen. This is kind of whistling up here. It's like a whistle. All right. Hebrews, those who have your Bibles and those who are watching, amen, live stream, amen, connect with us right now and uh, let your parties know that Bishop is on the air. We're teaching God's word. All right. Now the Bible says here, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Now, I want to talk about the faith subject today because it's important that we get this here. Amen. And, and I'm going to show you why. Watch this here. It is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Now, I want you to look at this word here. This is very important. Look at this here. Number one, substance. Somebody say substance. substance. Evidence. evidence. And things. Evidence. Now, wait a minute. Now, I said three things here. What? Say it again, substance, evidence, and things. Now, if you talk about that right now, those three items can actually be touched. Substance can be touched. Amen. So what is in, you, you, you can put some things together, and this is made of this substance. It can be touched. Evidence can be touched. And things can be touched. But notice here, it says here, but faith is the evidence of things not seen. So understand what happens in the spiritual world, in the, in, in the spiritual world of God, how God operates. He teaches us to have faith because you don't see all the substance, the evidence, and things that's backing you up. Y'all missed that right there. You, you don't see it. That's why I see it. When you have faith, in faith, you have substance. Somebody say, in faith, I have substance, I have evidence, and I have things, but they're not seen. So therefore, right now, that's why he wants us to have faith, because 
Remember again, when Daniel prayed, the angel of God met Daniel. He said, Daniel, from the first day you prayed, I had the substance, the evidence, and the things waiting for you. But the prince of Persia withstood me for 20 and one days. And so otherwise, Daniel was kind of discouraged. He said, Lord, if I'm praying and 21 days has passed, what is happening? But the angel showed him that your prayers were answered from the day you start praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, the Lord is answering my prayers. And he has the substance, the evidence, and the things awaiting me. And that's why we have that faith. See, see, now faith is a substance. That, to me, now, substance also is a, a material made from something. A, a, a evidence is an outward sign or proof of something. A things is an object or possession of something. So, therefore, when we talk about faith, that means it's, everything is lined up for you in faith. That's why you have to keep the faith of God because everything is in the ingredients called faith. Amen. Turn and say, everything you need, you got it. But walk by faith. Now, let me show you here. Let's go further. Now, let's go over here to, if I would, amen. Uh, I think I'm going to take you first to... Um, matter of fact, go to drop the verse 6. Give me verse 6. Verse 6 first. Now, in verse 6 it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, how many here love the Lord? Now, if you love the Lord, you know you want to please him, right? So now, in order to please God, you must have what? Faith. Because without what? Faith. It's impossible. Now, something is impossible. It just can't happen. That means, I don't care what you believe, how long you pray, how long you lay hands, how long you prophesy, if you don't have faith, you cannot please God. He said, without faith, you cannot please me. Because he that cometh to God must believe that he what is, and he is a what? Rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, God said here, if you come to me, you must believe that I am. You know, and understand the I am is everything. Everything you want in God is the I am. Praise God. So that's why you have to come to him. He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him because they believe that I am. Hallelujah. Now watch this here. Let's go further. Okay. Now we look a little bit further now. This is important. I want you to catch this. It's going to be very good for you because it's going to bless your life. The next scripture found here is a story about a widow woman. Let's go to 1 Kings 17 and 8. Now, let me, let me show here, and I'm trying to think if I should do this first. Um, before we go there, I think I'm going to take you here to Mark 9. I, I'm going to take you and then I'm going to show you something here. In Mark 9, verse 14. Mark 9, and then I'm going to go to 1 Kings after this. And I'm going to show you here that you got to be careful of the little things that can block your faith. Amen? Amen? All right? And it says here, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude among them, and the scribes questioning with them. Read. Okay. All right? And straightway, okay, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to salute him. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. I, I think I'm getting the wrong scripture here. This, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right one I'm looking at. Amen. Mark. Is that Mark? Okay. All right. Let me go back here. Amen. Let me, let me recant this a little bit. Let me go back here a little bit further. Meanwhile, before we do that, let's go to 1 Kings, and I think maybe I need to go there first. That's probably why. 1 Kings chapter 17. Let's go to 1 Kings 17, and then I'm going to go back to Mark, and because I'm going uh, I'm I'm to combine this together and show you how sometime when we are believing God, there's little doubt in our way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's, it's, sometimes there's a little doubt. Sometimes we trust, we trust in God, but not trusting God all the way. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Like, you know, some people say, you know what, well, I believe that God can do it, but I don't know if he can do that. See, you, when we trust God, we have to trust him. Somebody say all the way. And here it is, and the reason I'm going back here, I'm going to go back to this in a minute. Amen. This scripture here talks about a widow woman. Now, y'all know the story about the widow woman who had, now, uh, let's start from here. She's a widow, because, a widow because she lost her husband. So now, God sends a man to take the place to help her with her provision. And he's called Elijah. Amen. Now, he was there to help with provision. He wasn't there to marry her. He wasn't there to date her. He wasn't there to get engaged with her. He was there to take the place of helping as though he was a husband in that home. Amen. And let me explain to many of you, whenever you are going through something, God will assign someone to your life. Somebody said, God, send my assignment. Now, watch this here. It's very important we get this here. It says, and the prophet had to obey. And people say, now if you're a prophet, there's going to be things that God tell you to do that you may not want to do. Because now if God told you to go and let some ravens feed you, how many would go ahead and say, Lord, let the dirty birds come my way? Because see, sometimes when we say, when you walk in that, that order, you got to fulfill purpose. A prophet was one who carried burdens. A prophet was a seer. A prophet has to do things that it is going to be hard to go and tell the people, I'm ready to root up, tear down, restructure, and then rebuild again. It's going to be very hard to tell the people. He said, Lord, and that's why I believe that Jeremiah was saying, Lord, I'm just a child. He said, say not that thou art a child. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. And sometimes we don't want to tell people the truth because we're going to keep them in friendship and rather than divine order. I understand my point. This is so powerful that uh, now he's speaking to the prophet. Now, this prophet had trusted the Lord. And again, when God challenges us in our calling, sometimes it's not going to be everything you want because now God himself could have said, I'm going to send you some doves to feed you. But he sent them ravens. Ravens eat dead things. But you know what? The, the powerful thing about God, when God takes something dirty and clean it, it's clean. Yeah. And that's what God shows. Remember when the Lord told Peter, take, eat, and kill and eat? And Peter said, I will not touch anything that's uncommon or unclean. And the Lord said, he had, say not, because anything I clean, don't call it unclean or common, because God has cleansed it. And that's why going back here, he was talking about the Gentile. I can't go to the Gentile race, because the Gentile race was called the dogs. But the Lord said, I'm sending you to the Gentile race, and therefore, when I clean them up, they're going to be engrafted as the children of Israel. Y'all oh my, my God. Now watch this here. So now this prophet is going around. He now, God says here, the next level is this. You just let some ravens feed you. You believe that. Go to Zarephath that belonged to Zion. And dwell, I want you to dwell there for a while. And behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Verse 10, and he arose, and I like that. See, when you call by God to do something, he arose. He didn't think about it, he didn't question it, he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, there was that little wid widow woman. She was there gathering of sticks, and he called and said to her, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, again, I talked about this some time ago, that it was so easy for this woman, in verse 12, when you read that, and as she was going to fetch it water, he stopped her. Because it's easy to give something that doesn't cost you nothing. Y'all got quiet. It's easy. Well, go get me some water. No problem. I mean, ain't going to talk about nothing. Just go get the water. But he stopped and said, I pray thee, Give me a morsel of bread in my hand. 
All right? Verse 13, uh, 12, okay? And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. Now, wait a minute. No conversation about water, but it's a conversation about the, cu- the, the cake. See, remember, church, sometime we will be challenged to do something, and God wants you to do it without question. See, remember, give me some water, no question. Make me a cake, hold up. See the difference? Look at the difference. No conversation when you ask for water, but it's a conversation when you ask for a cake. See, because sometimes we don't want to give something that costs us something. We want to give something that costs us nothing. Sometimes people want the anointing for free. People, I don't want, and sometimes, let me tell you what happens. That's why sometimes jealousy gets in churches and people would backstab leaders and wonder because you know what happened? They get angry because a leader who's making and paying the price, and then some folk get mad and say, you know what? How come they got all this? What's going on with their life? But guess what? You don't know the price that some people are paying behind the scene. You don't know the fasting and the prayer. All you see is the glamour and the stage, but you don't see the work behind the stage. Hallelujah. And so I was watching a documentary the other day about J-Lo. It just happened to look the next week, and I saw this documentary, how her life began. How she hustled and came from a poor family, but yet she danced and danced away and danced. And after a while, she got a job on living, living in color, something like that. And, and she was, and kept moving up and moving up. And before I know, she did a production of her own picture, some other wild picture called Hustle. Come on here. <laughs> and, and moved up. But guess what? Today, she's worth over $20 million a picture. And somebody got nerve to get angry at her. But you wasn't on the dance floor and all them long hours dancing and turning and twisting and hurting her ankle and coming home sore and coming home tired and got children to take care of. You wasn't there, but she did all that and we get angry. Hmm. God help us. And that's the way it is sometimes. We pray, we seek God, we, we, we get anointed by God and folk get angry and say, why you got it? And they don't want to pay the price to get it. So now this man is making a sacrifice to go. He said, now, Lord, I'm going to this world. And it's going to be a, a step of faith because I'm not going to look too good asking this woman for food. Because she said here, behold, the latter part, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in, dress it. And I want you to hear this. Remember when I tell you this here. I'm dressing for me and my son. Listen carefully that we may eat. Y'all hearing that? And what? Eat and, eat and, eat and, remember that. She said, now, this is what we're going to do. We eating and dying. Now, verse 13 says what? And Elijah said to her, fear not, because she was fearful that, well, after this meal, we're gone. He said, go and do what you have spoken. But make me thereof a little cake first, bring it to me, and then after that, for thee and thy son. Verse 14. And now, this is the prophetic word that came from the prophet. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord Send of rain upon the earth. I'm glad I know my scripture. Come on here. So now watch this here. Amen. Now he's prophetically saying that the barrel of meal. Now watch this here. She said she had a handful. He prophesied the barrel. You're here? See, 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 now faith is substance of things hoped for. You don't see what the prophet see. He sees a barrel, she saw the handful. He didn't prophesy the handful of meal would not. He said, the barrel of meal shall not waste. God help us. Woo! Somebody lift up your hands and say, God is my supplier. 
And while I'm saying that, I just feel the anointing is going to supply some of your needs. That's going to blow your mind. You're going to say, Lord, how did this happen? Because you see a hand fill, but God said, I see a barrel of blessings. Somebody say a barrel of blessings. And he said, nothing's going to waste until the day the Lord sent rain upon this earth. Now watch this here. Now remember here, this woman is still walking in fear. Because sometimes we have to do a lot of things fearfully. Are you listening? I'm going to do it. I'm scared to do it, but I'm going to do it. Yes. Going back to J-Lo, she said one time she had this big crowd. No, no, no. When she did her production, she was around 300 people. She said, I was so scared and nervous over that 300 people I was trying to do my own production picture. But she said, I've been around people with 30,000 and wasn't scared. But when I got around 300, I got very nervous. Sometimes you have to do things even when you're scared. You're going to have to walk in faith when you are fearful. Because you know why? When you keep walking in faith, when you are fearful, fear will disappear. Because they can't walk together. Y'all got that? Keep walking in faith and fear says, I can't hang out with you because you're going too far. There's some folk that can't go with you anywhere because you're going too far anyhow. Amen. Everybody, I taught that years ago, everyone can go. Watch this here. Verse 15, if you would. Okay. And she went, and this is faith, because faith is not standing, faith is doing. She went and did according to the what? Saying of Elijah. And what happened? Watch this here. I want you to see this here. He prophetically said the word of the Lord. But she had to hear his words. Now, y'all must understand this here. Sometimes religion says this. If God don't tell me, I'm not going to listen to my leader. If God don't tell me, I'm not going to listen to the prophet. If God don't tell me, I'm not going to listen to thus and thus. Notice that she did according to the saying, not of God. It came from God, but she did it according to the saying of what Elijah said. She did it according. She trusted his word. I'm going, I'm going to do what you said according to your words out your mouth. And she and he and her house did eat, huh? Many days. According to the saying of Elijah. Now, we got to get religion out of the way. If the Lord don't tell me to give, and the Lord don't tell me to do this, and Lord, see, 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 you waiting for the Lord to come and tell you, sometimes God is going to talk to you like he's going to talk to you through a man or woman. So he talked to Elijah, and she had obeyed the word that came out of his mouth. And she ate many days. Now, let me go on back now. Let's go and drop down to another thing that happened. Earlier I said, this woman said, let me make this meal for me and my son that we may eat and what? Back. Now, go to Proverbs 18.21. Then I want you to go back here. Hold your fingers there because you can go back here if you have your Bible. Go to Proverbs 18.21. See, she said something that can, see, remember this. It's important that be careful what you say out your mouth. Y'all got quiet. You got to be careful. You, gotta, you can't just say anything because, see, people don't know how powerful words is. Words are so powerful that the Lord said, let there be, and there was, because words has power. When he went to the grave and told Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth, what happened? Lazarus, he came forth. Is that right? That's how powerful words are. Amen? So we got to be careful that, you know, well, I said, uh, I'll never get nothing in life. See, now don't say that. I, I, I never said, you know, uh, uh, this thing, you know. See, when you say bad things, it actually grows because words are seeds. Words are seeds. Jesus told the, the, the seed, peace be still. And the sea came to a calm. See, because words has power. And it tells us here, let's read this together. Everybody say, death in life are in the power of the tongue. And watch this here. Now, this is the part I want you to hear. And they that love it, whether it be death or life, you're going to eat the fruit thereof. Whatever you love. If you love death, 
you're going to eat the fruit of that. If you love life, you'll eat the fruit of it. They that love it, whatever you speak, you're going to eat the fruit thereof. Y'all got this? How many of you receiving this word today? Now watch this here. Now the next thing, let's go back to Kings. First King chapter 17, drop down, first King, yeah, 17, and go to verse 17. Now, what happened, this woman said, we will eat our meal and die. And it came to pass. Y'all miss that. She said, we're going to eat and die. And it came to pass. After these things, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no more breath left in him. Verse 18. And she said to Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Verse 19. And he said to her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him on the loft. All right? Where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. Now watch what happened. Remember here, this son, when he said left with no breath, he had died. This son was gone. But remember, her words have power. We will eat and die. And it came to pass that now her son actually fell sick and died. Now, watch this here. Let's go read over further. Go to verse 20, if you would. So they, and you know, this is the thing about it. It's good that this woman allowed the prophet to come and eat at her house. Because while he was there, he was able to resurrect the thing that she lost. But she cried and said, uh, Lord, my God, thou hast brought this evil upon this widow. This is him crying. And he said, whom I sojourn, I'm staying with her by slaying her son. Verse 21. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. You see the anointing that happens? Amen. Amen. He prayed a prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And God will raise him up. Amen. Verse 23 says what? And Elijah took the child, brought him down out of the chamber into the house, delivered him unto his mother, and Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. Verse 24, it's very important that you understand this one because sometime when you doubt certain things, she was speaking doubt, I'm going to take my son, we will take this son, eat the last meal and die. She was walking in doubt. But now the woman said, uh, she said unto Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man and that a man of God and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth. Now wait a minute. Here's the thing, that means all this time, she still had doubt even when he fed her. Why is that? Because she said, now by this I know that thou art a man of God. How come you didn't know he was a man of God when he fed you? See, sometimes we, we church, we got to get to the level of keeping our faith. When we see a miracle happen, don't wait for the next miracle to happen and say, now I trust them. Trust them at the first time you see a miracle. And so he proved to her they ate many days. Why do you think that he's there? 
to take away your last meal and give you none. He was there to supply, and she ate many days. But then after the son went through a trial, he said, she said, now I know that thou art a man of God. That takes me to our scripture, to the, the scripture I was going to give you all earlier in Mark, where there was a young man who had a dumb spirit. And the father said, um, I brought him to the disciples. I wish y'all could find that for me. Amen. Give, give me that. I, you know, that slipped away from me here. Amen. I brought him to your disciples, and they couldn't cast them out. And, and the Lord was saying to this, this man, he said, now, wait a minute, I understand that you brought him. What is the story behind this? He said, because this son had a dumb spirit. Are you listening? And the dumb spirit is when you could not talk. And so, in, in the devil played on this to cause this, 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 this demon to affect this child. I don't know if you have that yet. You have, Mark 9 and what? 25, okay, good, all right, turn, all right, everyone turn to Mark 9, let's look at this here, okay, this is going to bless you now, watch this here, how many is getting this word so far, all right, now y'all get, get in this word, I'll let this, let this word digest in you, just don't sit here and just entertain the word, but get, get it in your spirit so you can start walking by faith, amen, all right, now, watch this here. Let me go over here and we get my Bible here. I want you to read this. This is very important. Now, he said here a little bit further. Okay, good. Now, he said here, now, this demon was throwing this child around. Verse 18, it says here, he foams and gnashed at the teeth and pine away. He said, I spoke to the disciples, but they could not cast them out. And he said, now, watch this here. This is the, this is the father talking to Jesus. And Jesus answered him and said, now watch this here. Jesus wasn't talking to the disciples. He was talking to the man. I want you to get this very carefully. Watch this here. O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and he saw him. Okay? And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Because, you know, when demons know who's anointed, they start acting up. You know that? Amen. You, they start acting up. They start throwing their stuff around and getting crazy. Okay, watch this here. And Jesus asked him, how long is it since this child had this demon? And he said here, uh, uh, since he was a child. Verse 22. And oft time he has uh, cast him into the fire, into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus told this father, watch this here. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. 24, it says what? And straightway the father of the child cried out and said this, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Now watch this here. I want you to hear this carefully. Are y'all getting this word? Mm -hmm. The problem was this. When this child was acting up before the disciples, they tried their best to cast the devil out, but the devil went nowhere. Ask me why. Because the father didn't have belief. It wasn't about the disciples. Jesus told him, if you can believe, all things are possible. Forget about what the disciples are trying to do. You, you don't have the faith. And that's why he confessed and said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because unbelief stopped the progress of what the disciples were doing. If you don't believe it, read your Bible. When, the, the, when Jesus went to Jairus' house, who did he put out? He put out the unbelievers and kept the mother and father there. Because they laughed him to scorn. Now, wait a minute. It goes even further. Go to Matthew chapter 13, 58. Go to Matthew 13 and 58. See, I want you to see this here, how when you don't have faith and there's an unbelieving spirit, it can block the blessing. Somebody say it can block the blessing. All right. Matthew 13, 58. What does it say? 
and he did not many mighty works there because of their, because of their, because of their. See, unbelief will stop progress. That's why, amen, he, they, he said, we brought him to the disciples, but they could not cast him out. Because the father himself said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Jesus could not work on unbelieving spirits. He did not many mighty works because of unbelief. I hope y'all getting this this morning. Are y'all here? Amen. How many of you received? Let me see your hands here if y'all understand this here. I want you to get your level up. See, God requires more from us in, the, in this, this coming to church. You got to be a faith walker, a faith believer, a faith talker. Amen, somebody. Because we have too many people who come to church and they walk out in doubt. They say, well, you know what? Well, I don't know if God can do it for me. We just talk a faith message, now walk a faith message. Amen. Watch this here in closing. We're going to close now. Now, it says here, he did not many works, uh, mighty works, mighty works because of the unbelief. I want to see some mighty works in my life. I don't have no room for unbelief. Come on here. And listen, what does it cost you to believe? Nothing. This is our believing. God, I believe it. Amen. Did not Peter have to trust God when he said, Lord, if it be thou, allow me to come into the waters. And the Lord said, come. And he as well. Whatever it's going to cost me, amen, just get off the boat and walk. It's something how when you step out in faith, things begin to work for you. Amen. You'll never know how to walk in faith if you stay on the boat. Because you'll see the waters and be fearful. But if you get off and walk on those waters, the waters should obey you. You got quiet. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said here. Amen. Say into this mountain, that mountain should obey you. Now, let me go here now. The next scripture found, and this is going to be in Mark 11. Go to Mark 11. Okay. See, this woman who was a widow woman, she had a little bit of doubt. She said, now I know that thou art a man of God. You didn't know that all the time when you ate all the meals? Come on here. When that barrel of meal didn't fail every day, you didn't know I was a man of God? But she said, after the, the next trial, now I know. It should have been before I knew, and now I do still believe you. Amen, somebody. Okay, now watch this here. Where we at? Mark, go to Mark 11. Everyone turn to Mark 11. If you have your Bibles. And go to verse, amen, um, go to verse 22. Hallelujah. See, Somebody said, death in life is in the power of what I say. Okay, now watch this here. Now, Mark 11, you see here, you know the story here, then Jesus here, amen, uh, was speaking about, amen, uh, the fig tree. The fig tree, he had cursed, and the fig tree withered away. And the Bible says, as a matter of fact, uh, verse 20 says, you could keep it right there, but he said here, and in the morning, as it came to pass, they saw a fig tree dried up from the root. And Peter called into remembrance, saying, Master, behold, the fig tree which I have cursed is withered away. And Jesus said in verse 22, uh, answering, saying, Have faith in God. All right? For verily I say unto you that whosoever, and when I say whosoever, it doesn't mean unbelievers, it means believers. Because, see, unbelievers don't have the same authority. They can't just say whosoever. I say this mountain. It has to be in Jesus' name. So the unbeliever don't have that authority. But it says whosoever, talking about the believer, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Now, what is the mountain? Are you talking about a physical mountain? No. Anything that's blocking you, it's got to go. Say that. Anything that's blocking me, it's got to go. Because that's the mountain. See, the mountain, remember here, God ain't talking about no physical mountain, rocky mountain. Come on here. Bear mountain. What do you say? No, no. <laughs> the Lord's talking about mountain in your life. Because remember here, a mountain is where you can't see the other side. Y'all missed that. You got a blessing on the other side, but the mountain is blocking it. 
You know you're going to be rich on the other side. You know you're going to be healed on the other side. You know you're going to be delivered on the other side. But that mountain will block it so you won't see the other side. So you got to say to that mountain, be thou removed so I can see the other side. Wait a minute. Now it goes on further. But now, not only so he said, now, and not only so say to the mountain, tell the mountain to get into the sea. Otherwise, drown out that mountain. And then it says, and do not doubt in your heart. Get in your heart that God's going to do this for me. Do anybody believe here that you can become a millionaire? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. All right. Can God do it? That's why I tell folk here, stop worrying about your rent. If God can make a universe, he can pay rent. Amen. Amen. If God can divide the seas and make man and put fruit on this earth without any kind of formula, God can speak and let somebody bless you with your rent. Paid in a year. I got a sister over here. The Lord, they said her rent was paid three, four, a whole year for the rest of the year. They didn't have, and guess what? God did it for them. So watch this here. Now let's go further. All right? He said, now, don't doubt in your heart, but believe. This wants you to catch. This is important. Faith is believing that things that you say shall come to pass. Faith is saying, you know what? I'm going to have that car. Faith is saying, I'm going to have that house. Faith is saying, I will open up a new business. Because faith is saying, I believe that those things which I say shall come to pass. And then what happens is this. When you say things, you shall have whatsoever you say. You remember the widow woman? We will eat and die. You will have what you, be careful of your words. Don't go around saying, what well, is my last meal? I feel like I'm going to be gone. No, no, no. Lord, I thank you for the meal. I thank you for more meals coming my way. Matter of fact, meal on wheels. Get on down here. Amen. See, see, don't, 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 don't limit yourself. The devil causes limit in our mind. Let me tell you why the devil causes limit. Because he's limited. But God is unlimited. That's why I said, trust in me at all times. Because he's the unlimited God. Limitation wants to set, stop limitation. Well, the devil said, I'm limited. I can't get into heaven, so I'm going to block you too. That's what he did with Eve. He knew he was kicked out of heaven. He tried to t- play the same game on Eve and say, you know what? I got kicked out. Now I'm going to get you kicked out too. And, of course, they were kicked out of the heavenly realm that they had on the earth. You know that, right? So, therefore... Remember here, man never had to work. You know what? Do you know in Genesis, there was no need for prayer? You know that? There was no need for prayer in Genesis, chapter 1, in the beginning. What you praying about? All the fruit is there. You didn't have to pray about going to H&M. Come on, talk to me. Everything was there. You need to just walk around the garden. Come on in, skip to the Lulu and the Tulip. But when their eyes were open, they recognized we have to go to forevermore. Forever 21. Come on here. H&M. Macy's and Bloomingdale. Come on here, talk to me. You know why? Because they knew they were naked. Their eyes were open. See, now we need clothes. Now we got a problem up in here. Now, Adam, get up. You got to go to work. Come on, talk to me. Before it was no work, no labor. You know, you know let me tell you something now. If anybody knows about how they do grass, like most things, they have the uh, sprinklers, right? That comes on a certain time in the morning and sprinkle and all the water is the grass. You know that? In the Bible time, when, in, in Genesis, the Lord actually allowed water to come up out of the earth and water the grass. No sprinkler system. It was his system. You see that? God has a system that don't work by man. And that's why God wants us to walk in the faith. Because when you walk in the faith, plan of God is a faith system that works by God. But we work the, play, the faith system that works by man. Well, if this don't happen, and we try to calculate too many things, don't calculate. Trust God. Trusting God is taking him off the calculation. 
Because David numbered Israel and God got angry. Amen, somebody. Now, verse 24, in closing. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, y'all got to understand, believe. Somebody said, when I pray, pray. believe. Believe. All right, we're going to believe that Huh? You receive them and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I'm going to say it again. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Is that right? Okay. Now, so that means it tells me when I want something from God, I got to believe that I receive it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm have, it may not come tomorrow morning, but I, it's going to be in the works. How many got some vision that you see some future plans for your life? How many believe? Now, how many really believe that you're going to get it one day soon? Now, you understand, everything walks in concordance with faith now. Because without faith, it's impossible to believe him. Because, you know, let's read this again. Now faith is the substance the evidence and things not seen. Three things I want you to remember this whole week. Say, I got substance, I got evidence, and I got things of the unseen world. And that's what faith is. All this is lined up for you. Praise God. Let me make it clear. Years ago, the building we're standing now was a supermarket. God sent a man to buy this when this place was like, you know, tore apart. And when they bought the city, bought it, took it over. A man bought this here. But God knew that one day he going to allow Mr. Foster to walk here and negotiate. Because it was a plan that I'm going to have this building. It was in the works. It wasn't in a new, oh, this is brand, no, no, no. God had this plan while people were shopping and pulling cans of uh, a spaghetti off the shelf. Come on here. God said, this is be my sanctuary. Some of you, how many, how many, how many have ever had a used car? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you not know why the new owner had that car? They had to release it because your name was on it. <laughs> come on, somebody. And that's why you got the car. Come on there. That's why I got my car now. <laughs> Praise God. My, my name was on that car. Beautiful car. And sometimes what God does, he'll put, your, listen, I got news for some of you right now. Your name is on somebody's house right now. They, they finished, they live in the court. They said, I lived here for 25 years, I'm going to sell it. Guess what, your name, you're next in line. Someone said, I'm next in line. And that's why some of you need to go drive through the neighborhood, take a bus or Uber, and look at your house that you're going to get. <laughs> Amen. Go to some new places and look at it. You know what, I'll be living there one day. Hallelujah. I got news for some of you. Some of you right now need to look at some of these stores who's closed down and say, that's where my business is going to start, right there. It says up for rent right now. I'm going to rent that soon. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. See, you got to have faith to believe. Amen. You got to believe God, that God, you can do this for me. You can do this for me. Because you know what God's going to do? He's going to bless us in such a way that we'll have money left on this earth for our children's children. Amen, amen somebody. Where now your family will start working with you and working for you. Come on, somebody. I'm going to go back to when I was talking about Jada was watching the documentary where now her mother come from the Bronx. Now she got her own house and maids and they got limousine drivers. Come on here. Look, can God do for you? You a child of God? You speaking in tongues? You praying? If God can do it to, for the, those who are in the work in the world, he could do it for the church system also. Give God the praise, everyone. This morning. So glad that you were able to join us on today. We really hope that this word has resonated with you and that you come back next week to enjoy another word or watch online with a friend as well. And again, make sure that you are sharing this link with someone that you feel like needs to hear it. We'll see you next week.